Hello, everybody. It's Miss Dana here at the Southall Library with our final recorded story time for spring 2021. I am hoping that we can do in person story time starting this summer. So I'm very excited that we can do programs outside. We're going to start doing that. Um, we'll have a tent. So we won't be in direct sunlight. So I think everybody will be very comfortable and just so happy to be all together again. We'll have a limit of 10. And obviously everybody will be distanced and masked. Um, so there will be safety precautions in place, but I'm hoping that I can see everybody again because it's very silly sometimes recording and hoping that you're listening out there um, to actually have kids in front of me be so nice to see everybody again. So I am giving you a preview because this summer we're going to have lots of programs having to do with animals. So I thought it'd be a fun way to end the recorded story times with an animal type of theme. And it is about going on safari. So usually when you go on a safari, it's usually to see animals, you might think right away, to see animals that are living in Africa. And a lot of those animals are lions and tigers and elephants and giraffes, monkeys. So those animals are in the story that I'm reading today. And it is really about a very little tiger who thinks he has the loudest roar. And this story is by Thomas Taylor. I hope you enjoy it. The jungle was a peaceful place. Everyone was quiet. Everyone was calm. Well, nearly everyone. Look at all of those animals as alligators, birds, monkeys, zebras, all calm and swimming in the pond. What do you think is going to come disturb the peace? Clovis. Clovis was a tiger. Even though he was small, he knew he was the fiercest, most roaringest tiger in the whole world. And Clovis thought that everyone else should know it too. So one day, he found some parrots chatting politely as they picked their juicy fruit. What is he going to do to those parrots? Roar! Suddenly there was Clovis. Walk! Oh boy, he saw some muddy wildebeest swallowing happily in their slimy swamp. They didn't see the roaringest tiger in the whole world. You see where he's hiding? He's hiding. In the bushes. What is he going to do? Roar! Then suddenly there was Clovis. See him roaring? Oh, those poor wildebeests, they're so scared. Do you think they like being scared? I don't know. Ooh, the mighty elephants were sunning themselves peacefully at the edge of the jungle. How nice. There's birds hanging out on them. They almost look like they're sleeping, sleeping soundly. Who's in the tree? I see Clovis. Suddenly, there was Clovis. Look who took off running. All you see are the elephants behind, running, running away. I don't know if they like being scared like that. I know I wouldn't like being surprised like that. Oh, yes, said Clovis proudly. I've got the loudest roar in all of the jungle. The animals began to complain. 
Why should he spoil our peace? Squawked an angry parrot. But what could they do? Then a monkey who was very clever had an idea. See him raising his arms down there below in the corner? He's telling everybody his plan. Clovis didn't notice that the others <clears throat> were creeping up on him, They're all hiding in the jungle. Then suddenly, look at that one gorilla with his finger to his mouth, like, shh, don't tell him. Oh, the elephant started trumpeting and the alligators growling and the zebras howling and the birds squawking, squawk, 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 rah, ee, 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 ee. All of the monkeys, they all made loud, loud, loud noises as loud as they could. Look at Clovis. Clovis is scared now, got very surprised. Do you think he liked it? He got a taste of his own medicine there. They did to him what he's been doing to them. Wow, Clovis climbed up a tree and he was very surprised. It was the loudest roar that he had ever heard. The little monkey looked up at the forest or at the fiercest, most roaringest tiger in the world up in the tree. If you promise not to roar at us, he said, then we promise not to roar at you, ee, ee, ee. Clovis said that he would try. And there he looked up at him in that forest tree because he was scared. So now he got a taste of his own medicine and he realizes maybe it's not so nice to roar at everybody. Even though he was so proud of his roar, the jungle was a peaceful place. Everyone was quiet, everyone was calm, and Clovis was very well behaved now. He was enjoying the peace too, but do you think he's always like that? He was well behaved most of the time. Every now and again, he has to act like a frisky little kitten, right? Who is he going to scare next? Poor Mr. Turtle. <laughs> He's going to get a surprise. You think he'll shrink into his little shell? Maybe. The Loudest Roar by Thomas Taylor. Hopefully you liked it. Clovis is a cute little tiger kitten who likes to play and surprise people. But there were a lot of jungle animals in that story. And I made sure in your bags that you had lots of fun choices for masks. I thought it'd be fun to make animal masks. I have the directions here. So I included in your bag, some people got monkeys, some people got lions, giraffes, and I chose to decorate a tiger for you as my sample. So hopefully you all picked up your bags and then you can color them in. I used regular color sticks, colored pencils. You can use crayons or markers to color in. This is what it looked like in your bag. So you can color it in. And I think you might need help when it comes time to cutting it out because you have to cut out the eyes so you can see through your mask. If you ask a grown up in your house to help you cut out the two circle eyes, then that would be great. And then maybe you could use practice with scissors to cut out the whole mask after you color it in. I colored mine in, I'll show you. My tiger is orange with black stripes. That's what I colored mine and see how I cut the circles out, the two eyes, and then you cut out the whole mask. Then hopefully at home you have some kind of hole punch or you can use a pencil to punch holes in. On your mask, there are two black dots. And that's where you know to punch the hole so you can tie the string on 
to go around your head. But this is the hole punch that I used. So you just punch two holes on each side. And then I gave you some yarn. This is a huge bunch of it. I just gave you a small little piece, just like I did. I used for mine. So you tie it on to the holes that you made in your mask and then make sure you can measure it. So you can put it over your head, and look through and be, you become a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you had a lot of fun with your mask. Some of you will become monkeys. Some of you will become giraffes or lions. By putting your mask on. Maybe you can become like Clovis and scare people <laughs> with your loudest roar. So that's the animal mask craft. So I have activities for you to do too. You can pretend that you're going on a safari in your house or in your backyard. I have all of these pictures that I laminated and put in your bag. So one is of a bobcat or a rabbit, a raccoon. And do you see what's on each of these pieces of paper? It is a footprint. This is a track that a raccoon would make in the ground if it's raining out, if you like see a print in the mud, you can try to guess and see whose track that is. Some are very easy to figure out and some might be a little hard. Like the duck's webbed feet would probably be an easy one for you to figure out. But what I did is I set this up as a game. So basically, your parents can help you with this too. You cut each of these. So you cut down this way to separate the animal from their tracks. So you'll have a pile of tracks and a pile of pictures of each animal, two separate piles. So then while you're playing in your room and not looking, your grown up in your house can hang up all of the pictures of the animals all around your house. So you can kind of do a little walk around and spy with your little eye all of the animals. And then they will give you the pile of tracks and you have to figure out which track matches with which animal. I made it a little bit easy for you because sometimes Bobcats tracks and wolf tracks or fox tracks might look a little alike. See, here's the wolf. They might have the same type of paws. So I did give you like a little hint. You see how on the instructions there are little shapes colored shapes next to each animal. So if you get a little confused, trying to figure out which track belongs to each animal, you can also match up the shapes. I put shapes next to the tracks. So you can match the sh colored shape to the animal that it is. If you're finding it, that it's finding it's a little challenging. So that could help you out a little bit. And then once you do it once or twice, maybe you'll be able to tell which ones go with which track without even needing to use that color code key that I gave you. The other activity that I gave in your bag was a bingo sheet. We all love to play bingo. So they're wild animals. You've got a monkey one and an elephant one. So what you do is some people are learning their letters and some kids are learning their numbers. So if you make a bunch of copies of this at your house, you can play with a friend and see how well they do too with the elephant bingo or the monkey bingo. 
maybe have a grown up help you set this up too. So whatever numbers you're learning, you can write the numbers in each elephant. Or if you're learning your letters, you can write a letter in each elephant. If you're learning your numbers, you probably have a deck of cards at home. And then you can just put the numbers in the deck of cards that match the numbers on your bingo sheet. So then every time you pull a card and say, the elephant has a number one on it and you pulled a number one, then you can mark off your sheet. So if you mark off all of the elephants with all of the numbers that you learned, or you can roll a dice, that's a good way of learning numbers too and matching up, then you can win a prize. Maybe you can decide at home what your prize will be for winning the bingo game. Everybody loves to play bingo and get a little surprise at the end or just a pat on the shoulder that you won the game. Doesn't have to be a prize at the end, but it's pretty fun. So that is the bingo game. Sometimes people have letter cards at home too, but I don't know if you do or not, but maybe numbers would be better for the bingo since everybody seems to have a deck of cards at home. You can always make your own cards too. That's a very fun project. If you wanna do letters, you can just take a little pieces of paper and write the letters, practice writing your letters. So then you can play bingo with letters. Well, hopefully everybody had fun with these activities and the art, safari mask and the story. I'm just taking a little bit of a break where, um, because the weather is just going to be so nice in May and June. And then we'll be ready for more programs in the summer. And I hope I get to see all of you in our library yard and in the library very, very soon. Take good care, have a great spring, and I will definitely see you soon. Bye.